When We Were Young, 2024, all album plays, 57 records in total, and we are listening to all of them. The Emo Social Club is going to tell you what to think about these records. On this episode, we are talking about Dance Gavin Dance's Mothership. And before we get into our opinions and our thoughts on this, Lizzie, tell us a little bit more about Dance Gavin Dance and Mothership. This was their seventh album, and it came out on October 7th, 2016 via Rise Records. This is the second release that they have done with a consistent lineup. It debuted at number 13 on the Billboard 200 charts, and it had four singles, Chucky vs. the Tortoise, Betrayed by the Game, Young Robot, and Inspire the Liars. There was also an instrumental version released released later in 2019 after the release of this album in 2016 they went on two north american tours and then also toured on warp tour as well tillian pearson is the vocalist on this record they recently parted ways with him over creative differences i have no idea who the vocalist is now who will most likely be the person there yeah i have no idea who he is but i'm assuming whomever it is they will be we specifically pushed back this review of this one just in case they announced something else like i thought they might switch the record I was like, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm like, we got to push this back. But it seems as though they are going forward with this album. Well, before we get into our thoughts on this record, make sure you are subscribed. 57 records being played. All of them will be in a playlist down below. Let us know if you like this. Let us know if you like those records. Let us know if you have opinions and thoughts. But you got to subscribe in order to do that. You don't, but you should subscribe because then you'll know when all of our new videos come out, all of our new reviews, all that good stuff. It's really cool if you do follow. You'll be a cool kid. Here are my thoughts on Mothership by Dance Gavin Dance. I am unapologetically a huge Dance Gavin Dance fan. (laughs) Oh, okay. Love Dance Gavin Dance. Loved it with Johnny Craig. Didn't really listen to the Kurt Travis years. Did listen to the Tillian years. And I think the Tillian years are their best work. This is not their best album. (laughs) Okay. They have better records that were released before this, but I do really like this record. And I've listened to basically everything that Dance Gavin Dance has put out. Although obviously there are a lot of reasons why I've stopped listening to them more recently in the, in the more recent uh, past, but I am still a massive fan of this band. I'm still a massive fan of this record. Even like re-listening to it. I'm like, this isn't their best record, but it do go though. (laughs) I think they have much better records. I think they have much better like albums as a cohesive thing as something that I would want to see performed in full. This record seemed like a very weird pick for the festival and even more so they didn't change it when, you know, major lineup changes happened and like you have a new singer who like Tillian's vocals are insane. This is a band that I listen to as a vocalist because I can't do this. (laughs) Like I think I can. I think I I try but like, I can't do what he does. That is, this is like a, a person who is physically capable of doing something that a lot of people are incapable of doing. And he does that shit live too. When, when I've seen them in the past. So like it to me is just a crazy band that to exist. (laughs) It's a crazy band that still has this many albums and is still playing festivals. It's crazy to me that there is so much lore and legacy to this, this act This is a band for musicians. Yeah. This is not a pop band at all. This is a band that is specifically for dudes who love guitar, dudes who love really talented musicians. I like it because of that reason. (laughs) And I definitely get why people don't like Swancore or like any of this like noodly bits that are just constant chaos around all this shit. I like this record. I like it a lot. I caught myself really singing along more I listen to it and I'm happy to revisit it. Maybe want to revisit a lot of the other, what I think are better dance Gavin dance records that came before it. Here are my thoughts on dance Gavin dances mothership. I've known that this band has existed for a long time. I never really wanted to listen to it or get into it because every time I have heard this band be brought up, it is one, they have swapped their vocalists. Yeah. Two, there is a very bad traumatic death that has happened. Yeah. Or three, there are very bad assault allegations that have come out. So my entire purview of this band without me having much of like a pretty much a neutral feeling about it is not really great at the end of the day because of everything that has come out about it. So I've never really wanted to listen to this band, especially with as rampant of a discography as they have and as big <laughs> as a fan base they have. Should too. I jump in on their seventh record? That's bonkers to me. Yeah. 
What happens to a band when they keep subbing out the singer? Does it eventually then become a cover band if they never go back to the original singer that started it all? In listening to this and knowing some of the backstory with what they have done with all their singers, I ask the question now, is Dance Gam and Dance a new age cover band because they keep subbing out so many of their singers? Interesting. And I'm going to respond with, I think this band is more about the screamer and the guitarist Will Swan over everything. And even a little bit the drummer. The drummer has a lot of songwriting credit on this. I do think that it has more to do with some of the other guys. The personalities of the singers, especially being a band that started with Johnny Craig, a guy that everybody has an opinion on, yes, is like, how are you going to ever live that down? How are you ever going to recover from that? They've released more albums with Tillian than they did with Johnny. They normally don't play Johnny songs with Tillian no, okay. in, the pa- in the past uh, when I've seen them. They play like one And I would relate this to another band that we love, Amorosa, also Johnny Craig band. So it's a similar way of like, you're never getting back together with that singer, right? Even though that singer wrote some absolute heat when they were in the band yeah, and songs that like you could definitely be playing, your new vocalist is not playing that stuff. And they've been in the band for longer than the original singer. So now that band is a completely new band. Mm -hmm. Although that singer does have credit for creating something and creating those songs, basically what happens is you don't see that singer live anymore. So the new music is just whatever you're going to hear. Right. I do think in the fact that they have replaced Tillian and now have a new singer and are booked to play shows like this is like, yes, this is a cover band, but only in the way that they have a new singer. And that is such a forward person in any band. And no one's really going to care about what Will Swan or what John Mess, the screamer are going to do in this. They just aren't. They're not, they're not as forward. Their parts are not as interesting as what the singer has been doing. They have, do not have the personality of a Tillian or of a Johnny Craig. It just is what it is. I, I just think that because, and again, this is a band I've never really had no rhyme or reason to listen to. I've been very neutral on them. I just wonder what is going to happen here with it. I think this is a, guitarist wet dream album for sure exactly what you want with excellent musicianship i can't doubt them or fault them for that it's fantastic despite everything that has happened with tillian he is a very good standout vocalist he has one of those vocal ranges that he could do really well in the pop circuit anyway did you like this record it it was fine I'm not a guitarist. I can't play anything. I'm on the business side. I'm on the journalist side of music. But I think if you are somebody who is very heavily invested in music to this level, it's something very enjoyable. But also because of everything else I have heard prior, it has kind of dampened my outlook on it. I try to come in very neutral to this band because I really, again, don't have a full vibe on it. But everything I ever heard in the mainstream like music scene about it, it's not really all that great all the time. Lizzie, did you have any standout tracks on this record? I think the one that really stood out with me was Deception. That song bangs so hard. <laughs> with this song, the vocals are very elevated and diverse compared to a lot of other vocalists in the scene during this time, very specifically. And it does really pull you in with a lot of intricate riffage. So that's where I really started to say, oh yeah, this is very much like a dude bro guitars, dudes, wet dream. That part where it's just deception. I'm like, oh, every time, every time. Do that a thousand times. When this album came out, like the lead single was Betrayed by the Game. Mm -hmm. I think I listened to that song on repeat for like three months straight. Like the only song I listened to for like three months. Okay. I love that song. You may have noticed this. Maybe you didn't get into it. And I would love to talk about it in Spicy Takes. But the lyrics don't really make a ton of sense on this record at all, ever. That's kind of their move. They just sort of say whatever sounds good. Yeah. But this one, I was like, I don't know why. Because again, Tillian doesn't really say anything. Like, I just crashed my car and it got me thinking of you. So I just thought I'd call to tell you that I loved you. You know what's funny? I have that written down as well. <laughs> and you're like, wait, that like kind of fucks. But also like, what are you saying? Actually, the chorus of the song and like the vibe of the song and all the feelings that like go into it. 
I was like, dude, they actually can write like a general a pop song. It's still the same dance, Gavin dance on it, but it's just like really catchy, really like really just surprised me from this band. This band doesn't really do a ton of singles. They don't do EPs. They don't do singles. They just are like, we wrote 12 tracks. Here you go. Here's a package of songs. And I think like they always have like one standout on it. And then they have like a bunch that like kind of don't, but I think they're just like really strong songwriters. And this is the one where they were like, this is the one that stands out moving on to all of our other, like more goofy uh, twinkly shit. And this is the one where they're like, no, listen to this. And I did <laughs> like, you said, a I'm lot. In on I listened it. to it a lot. I wish I could like, look at like my Spotify history or my Apple music history or whatever. I was listening to it on at the time. Cause I, or YouTube even, I'm like, dude, this probably was like, you've listened to the song a lot, man. <laughs> you, like, need you, to stop. Right? you need to quit. I, that was one that I also did like, and it, it really stood out because of the lyricism. It is this very simplistic chord, like just the song structure that you have in it. It's really easy to remember, you know, looking back at it now, it's cringe. But at the time you would probably be like, oh yeah, I feel that so hard. There's nothing identifiable in the lyrics at all. But yeah. it's it's just the feeling that you get from it. Like there's nothing to grab onto, but there is like a sense of what you're getting from it. And it's the musicianship behind it beyond just like writing down correct words. Philosopher King, I did really like the opening of it. This is where Tillian's vocals really reminded me of Kellen Quinn. Yeah. From Sleeping With Sirens. Yeah. It's very comparable when he's hitting these certain notes in the song. Yeah. I think also that's why I was a little bit more drawn to it. But also this is where we see that, yeah, we're really big music nerds, but we're also still really into metalcore and they incorporate a lot more of that background sound into this song specifically, Yeah, which for me made it a little bit more of something I would be drawn to first and foremost, because I usually do see Dance Give and Dance as classified more as a metalcore band just from... The outside perspective, not really yeah. knowing much about it. I think it has the same bearded fans. I'll yeah, put it that way. <laughs> it, it overlaps. It's a Venn yeah. diagram. The but fans are a Venn diagram. Yeah. Again, as somebody who has really no neutral thought on it, really outside of what I've heard and news about them, I was always like, oh, yeah, that's just another metalcore band that's there. I mean, I agree with all the ones you said. There's a lot of very, like, interesting, catchy parts on this to me, just as, like, somebody who really wants to write this kind of crazy shit. Like there's a lot of parts that stand out. I can't really pick like a bunch of top tracks cause it's just a lot of stuff. And there's also stuff in like the, the big tracks that I like that I'm also like, uh, cut that part out, like cut mm -hmm. that down. But yeah, I think that a lot of this record like stands out to me in general. And again, I think they have better records than this. <laughs> Not bad. And there are better records. Yeah. I mean, that could be the way for a lot of bands. Yeah. I'm going to ask you how you feel about a couple things uh -oh. and you give me your spicy takes on it. Okay. How did you feel when you first heard cocaine Christmas? <laughs> Wasn't ready for the title. <laughs> cocaine. Flossy Dicky bounce. I just think that this is also a band that is so unserious about a lot of things, but so serious where it, does make more yeah. sense at the end of the day. <laughs> like the things they care about and the things they clearly do not care about. Right. And uh, I was trust like, how me, do you pick? I'm, I'm somebody who's a big purveyor of just silly, goofy lyrics and music. I listen to like happy hardcore techno. That okay. That's silly, goofy music. Cocaine cringe fest, not cocaine Christmas. I mean, it's still, right. yeah. John mess is the, the screamer. He has always just made up complete gibberish. But the way that he's doing it is like, I don't want to write lyrics. I want to write like syllables and consonants for how they will sound when I scream them rhythmically over this. Mm -hmm. And he's always done that it's from the very beginning of this band. That is what John Mess does. So it's a love it or hate it type thing with him. Uh, and there's some stuff where you're like, awesome. And there's some stuff where you're like, what are you fucking saying? How did you feel about the lyric? I couldn't wait to tap into the brain of my cat and let him know he's my little baby meow meow boo. I feel like that's what every single cat person would want to do realistically. And I think they put it down on paper for everybody. No, you heard that in a song. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, awesome. Again, they are seriously so unserious. It makes sense. It's bad and it's amazingly good <laughs> is how I feel about it. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Put that on again. <laughs> There's mean, also like Will Swan's rapping in that song. Yeah. Will Swan, like 
across a few of their records would do like a small section of, of rapping. I think that is his worst one <laughs> across all uh, the records. It's not a good vibe. It's just that it's like, okay, thanks man. But that, that is the one song where I'm like, I could skip this one. Chocolate Jackalope. Okay. Uh, of all of them. I'm like, I would skip that one. Exposed just because I re-listened to it a few times and I kept saying, why don't I like this sound? <laughs> it's not falling well in my ears. And it's because it reminds me too much of like a hodgepodge of like vintage rock songs. Mm -hmm. I don't like vintage rock. You also have these lighter keys in the verses. They don't sound displaced, but it's just jarring on my ear that it doesn't do anything for me. It's like, I got to skip this. I don't like what's going on here. This is yeah. funny business now. I would have been surprised either way if you came in and said I hated this record I would have been like man I thought you might like something but I was like going to be more ready to accept that but if you came in and were like wait I like this a lot I would have been like all right Lizzie's mm -hmm. a woman of culture all right we all see. right listen we see the we see the we see the mission I, I we see the vision here I, I see what this band is about and I I understand why that so many people for so many years despite a lot of different things that have happened with this band and why people are still holding on to them as much yeah. as they have. I understand it now, having listened to it. Well, those are our thoughts. Those are our opinions on this record. But there is one more question we have to answer. Should you see Mothership by Dance Gavin Dance at When We Were Young 2024? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tillian's not in it. I, no. I Look, maybe the singer that it, they put out a couple songs that I haven't really listened to, but... I think we can agree like Tillian makes this fucking record. Yeah. Barring everything else out, just listening to this album for what it is. It's Tillian across the board without that. I'm like, nah, like I I'm, I'm out. I, I feel like you're going to get something you're not anticipating, especially I feel kind of bad for people who maybe aren't really online following a lot of the updates when it comes to no, this. I feel the best for them. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I were like you. Because you're going to go and you're going to say, oh, my God, it's Tillian. And then it's going to be whomever the new singer is. And I feel like we just keep like saying this in a negative way. We just have no idea who the person is. I just see his photo here on the on the Spotify. He's, he's just jacked as hell. That is the largest man I've ever say, seen. You should talk in. I can't. I, you, no. Yeah. But no. Yes. In in reality, I will probably watch a little bit of this because I love this record, but I'm not going to stick around. It's just it's not the same. It's not worth it. Yeah. I don't think you should, especially if you are somebody who specifically wants to hear that vocalist because you're just might end up potentially disappointed. Now, if you are a ride or die, I know a lot of people who are, Plenty of people it's not going to, it's not yeah. going to matter. And you're going to be there anyway. I will not be, I will be somewhere else. Yeah, me too. Those are our thoughts. That's where we'll be. Where will you be? Hopefully you are in the comments, letting us know if you agree, disagree. I don't know. Say whatever you want. You don't, you're on the internet. You love it. Tell us who's the best singer of this or whatever. <laughs> we are reviewing all 57 records. Let us know on all of them, what you think about them. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Until when we were young, until Dance Cabin Dance, and until Mothership, we'll see you there. <laughs>